because there'll be so much pent up demand to interact, to consume, for entertainment, for normalcy, for feeling productive. That come September, there is going to be an opportunity for every single one of you to print money at will. Welcome, everybody. This is For the Love of Money, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success by sharing the tools, tips, and stories of those who have already made it. My name is Chris Harder, and each week I will bring you incredible guests in order to prove that when good people make good money, they do great things. Hey everyone, welcome back to another amazing episode of For the Love of Money. Today, we are actually diving into the coronavirus economy part two. And part two is going to be what to expect and how to prepare. Now, if you have not listened to part one, go back and listen to that either before or after this. They don't have to be in order. Both of them are going to bring you a ton of value. But the goal of part two, what to expect and how to prepare, is really to help you understand what we're facing and then help you create a plan that's going to allow you to survive and then thrive. And I really do mean thrive. Listen, I know there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of fear out there, but there is so much opportunity as well. And I'm going to talk about both in here. I'm going to be very realistic with you about what we're facing But then I'm going to be very frank with you about the incredible opportunity that every single one of you listening has. And so stick with me to the end, even as we go on a little bit of a roller coaster ride with some ups and some downs, because I promise you, you will feel exponentially better, exponentially safer, and exponentially more optimistic about what's going to happen as we navigate our way through this together. Because that's really the truth of, of what's going on. We are in this together. Now, I said, if you remember, if you listened, in part one of this series, that there would be more bankruptcies than deaths due to the coronavirus. And when I say more, I mean like a thousand to one ratio. There will be more bankruptcies than deaths. But do you want to hear the rest of the news? There will also be more entrepreneurs born, more entrepreneurs created, more new businesses created, and more millionaires created coming out of this more than any other time in our history. And so as we navigate this together, I'm going to help you decide which end you want to be on. You want to be on the end of ending in struggle, a financial struggle? Or do you want to be one of the individuals that's going to find the opportunity, be resourceful, and come out the other end as one of these brand new entrepreneurs, one of these brand new businesses and one of these brand new millionaires created. You have to realize that with every massive shift, massive new opportunity is created too. Simultaneously, they always go hand in hand. And so whatever you think that we might have lost over the last couple of weeks, we have gained 10 times the opportunity, which I'm going to prove to you in a little bit. So the very first thing I need you to do while you listen to this, and then the very first thing I need you to do as you put this episode away and continue to live life, is I need you to retrain yourself from seeing potential loss to somebody who sees opportunity. I am an opportunity-seeking machine. I can't help but see it everywhere I go. It's like a flashing light in front of me, and especially right now. And you can be that too. I want you to retrain your brain from seeking what possible fallout might happen to somebody who only sees the upside. Protect yourself from the fallout. We'll talk about that. But see the upside, because when you see the upside, you know where to go, you know what to do. Now, I want to be real. I know that not all of you feel prepared right now, and that's okay. I know that a lot of you are scared right now, and that's okay. And I know that there's a ton of uncertainty. That goes for all of us. And the reason I know this is because I have been in your shoes. I have faced the same scenery that so many of you are facing right now. 
the fear and the uncertainty, and the lack of a plan. Make no mistake, we are facing a massive challenge. And we are facing a massive recession. Never before have we seen the likes of 9-11 meets pandemic meets 2008. And thankfully, this time facing it, Lori, my wife, and I are more than set up to thrive. We have years of runway for our personal expenses, and we have years of runway for our business expenses without having to liquidate any investments at all. But that wasn't the case 12 years ago when we were facing the Great Recession. No, that was not the case. As a matter of fact, Lori and I were in the opposite position that we are right now. We were like many of you. No runway, no significant savings, tons of debt, and full of uncertainty and afraid. And so I'm not kidding when I say I fully understand exactly how you're feeling right now and exactly what you're facing right now. And I am equipped to give you advice because I have been there before. Here's a quick story. In 2008, when the recession hit, I was in banking. And I wasn't just in banking. I was one of the fastest rising executives at the world's biggest bank. And so, I mean, I was in it. I was in it from a standpoint of seeing behind the curtain of everything that was happening. And I was in it in terms of getting hit and getting hit hard. And after a year of closing down bank branches every day, every week, it became my turn to take a severance package and go home. Now, the problem is this. You would think that because I was working in banking, I would have taken care of our money. But I was young and dumb and ignorant and I thought it would last forever. And so we were living beyond our means. And when the music stopped, when the faucet of income turned off, and I was the only breadwinner at the time, we were faced with a big, big problem right on the front end of this recession. So having no job, having no income, and having no backup plan, Lori and I got to work. We short sold the huge home that we had just built that we were so proud of. We walked away from or liquidated any and all of the rental and investment properties that we had that were now upside down. We negotiated with our creditors on our credit card balances. We got rid of all of our cars except one that was so far upside down, meaning we owed more on it than it was worth that we just decided to keep it because it didn't make sense to pay the difference. I mean, we were in it. And I think the most humbling part was this. The most humbling part was also the part that saved us. And that was all the custom furniture, all the TVs, all the art, all the everything that we had made or bought for this new home that we had just built and moved into. We put it on Craigslist. Remember, this was 12 years ago. We put it on Craigslist. And stranger after stranger after stranger pulled up in front of the house while the neighbors were watching, walked into the house, lowballed me on the couch, lowballed me on the chairs, lowballed me on the tables, lowballed me on the TVs, and walked out with our possessions in exchange for some cash. Now, was that hard to swallow? Yes. Was that humbling? Yes. But was that one of the best moves we've ever made in our life? Yes. And here's why. We knew we had to make a bold move. And I figured that if I liquidated all of the stuff that didn't mean anything anymore to us, all the stuff that were just things, just possessions, that I would be able to create enough runway to prepay our rent for 12 months in a tiny little 900 square foot apartment in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we made our comeback, where we created our comeback story. And having that 12 months of runway by going through that humbling, tough set of decisions is what gave us the freedom and the peace of mind to roll up our sleeves and invent ourselves as you know us today. As the entrepreneurs with all the businesses and everything else that you see today, it came from that moment. And so I guess the first thing I want you to know is if any of you are scared and if any of you, any of you know that you are going to go through a very bad moment right now, that is okay because some of the greatest gifts in the world are going to come out the other side. You just can't see them right now and you just can't feel them right now. 
because I couldn't see it. I couldn't feel it. And even if a guy like me told me that was going to be the case, I wouldn't have seen it. But I am telling you just for the record, you're going to come out the other side and have a story like ours, if you choose to, where this became the greatest moment of your life, a moment of reinvention, a moment of possibility. And so from that humbling experience, combined with the past 12 years since then, where I've been educating myself and surrounding myself and creating and doing all the right moves financially, I get to offer you a very unique perspective on what you should and what you can do, especially if you feel unprepared right now. Now, disclaimer, I'm not about to give you financial advice. That's a must. I'm only sharing my opinions on what I think you could do. I'm not telling you, you have to go out and do these things. I'm sharing what I would do if I was in your position all over again. Because I know what's coming. Remember, my entire subject the past several years is money and business and money mindset. And I got to witness the last recession, the great recession, from behind the curtain, watching what happens in the banking system and in the economy and seeing all the reports before anybody else saw them. And so I know what's coming. We're about to see a significant number of jobs lost. You see, right now as I record this, we in California are on house lockdown for at least a month, if not longer. And three other states have joined us now on this total lockdown. And trust me, no matter where you're living, you're not far behind us. And everybody who's home temporarily from their jobs right now, because the restaurants closed, the stores closed, the offices closed, more than half of you are not going to have a job or that company won't be there or that restaurant won't be there when the music starts up again. That's just the facts. Home values. I've told you for more than a year now, a home is not an investment. It's a great place to live, but a primary home is not an investment. Investment properties are, income producing properties are, but not the home you live in. Home values are going to get rocked. Right now, we are under a mandated moratorium where you cannot be foreclosed on if you don't make your mortgage payment and you cannot be evicted if you don't make your rent payment. But guess what? That's just stuffing the monster in the closet a few more months. And he's going to come out bigger and badder than ever because the way this system works is whoever skipped those rent payments, whoever skipped those mortgage payments, they will have to start making the normal payments again when the music starts back up and make all those missed payments within a six-month period. So we're about to see a mass number of foreclosures. Foreclosures because mom and dad both lost their income, foreclosures because people aren't paying their rent and therefore the landlord who has a mortgage on that place can't pay the mortgage and the place gets foreclosed on. And with all these foreclosures, it's going to tear down the property value of the homes next to it that aren't in foreclosure. And because those property values will get torn down, people will start walking away from them because they'll become underwater again, just like they were last time. So home values can get rocked and they already have been. What you can sell your home for today is significantly less than what you could two weeks ago. But they're going to be nothing compared to what you're going to see with retail stores and commercial real estate. See, last time the theme of the recession was housing. This time it's going to be retail stores going away and never coming back again. Iconic chains you will never see again. And commercial real estate, strip malls, mall malls, Standalone stores will be empty. They'll be ghost towns. Commercial real estate will be hit worse than anything you've ever imagined. And with that, unfortunately, so will jobs. Make no mistake, even though they only lock us down for two weeks at a time or in uh, California here now 30 days at a time, we will be on lockdown because of the coronavirus through April, not just March, through April and likely May. All you have to do is look at the other countries to figure that out. But sometime in June and July, we'll start to get back to a new normal. 
Sometime in June and July, some restaurants will be opening, some stores will be opening back up, people will be back out on streets, and there will be some pent-up demand for consuming. But it's not until September. Come September, when the kids are finally back in school, because almost every child in the United States will have been home for six months, because all the kids will be back in school, because mom and dad will be back to work, because there'll be so much pent-up demand to interact, to consume, for entertainment, for normalcy, for feeling productive, that come September, there is going to be an opportunity for every single one of you to print money at will. Because the Fed is pumping so much money so early into the economy right now to help slow this thing down, to make it better than it would be otherwise, the combination of that much money being pumped into the economy plus the return of the consumer and the pent-up demand, come September, we are going to be able to print money. And my goal for all of you is to survive and then thrive. I want you to survive the next three, four, five, six months. And then I want you to put yourself during this time in a position to absolutely and utterly freaking thrive. Going back to the way that I opened this episode when I said, yes, there's going to be more bankruptcies and there will be deaths due to the coronavirus, but there will also be more businesses started, more entrepreneurs born and more millionaires created than ever before coming out of this thing. That's the side I want you to be on. So you have to survive, then thrive. Let's talk survival. I have a six-step plan that I am certain will make your life better, will set you up for success, and will help you get through this thing much easier than you would otherwise, as long as you follow it. Remember, this six-step plan comes from my experience both being on your side in 2008, facing what you're facing, and now being on my side this time when I face it. So let's go through the six steps. If you feel unprepared, or if you feel barely prepared, or if you want to make the most out of this opportunity that you are looking at, at the same time as reducing the risk and the fear, here's what you need to do. Step one, you need to stop the bleeding. Step one is stop the bleeding. Immediately pick up the phone, negotiate with your creditors. Now, here's a caveat, and you're going to think this sounds crazy, but if you do not have three months worth of savings or more, and you do have available credit, whether it's on your credit cards or a line of credit or equity in your home, I want you to first consider pulling out that money that's available and putting it into your personal account so that you do have that safety sum sitting there. If you don't have it anywhere else, you need to highly consider doing that because here's what happens. When liquidity dries dries up for the banks, then they dry up your liquidity by reducing all your credit lines right down to your balance. They do it without any warning. And any safety net you think you have in terms of available credit goes away overnight. I saw it last time. I was the one doing it last time in the banking system. And they will do it again and they're going to do it very soon. So if you do not have the appropriate savings, which I'm going to get a little bit deeper on in a little bit here, this is something you should consider. Open up a line of credit if you have to. Take the money out. Put it in your personal account. You have to get resourceful right now when I say stop the bleeding. All you have to do is call your car payments, call those creditors and ask for a deferral for a few months. Call your mortgage, ask for a deferral. Call your landlord, ask for a deferral. Call your credit cards, negotiate away the interest. Put a stop on some of your payments. The banks are doing this left and right. They're handing out yeses right now to anybody who comes to them first with this hardship because they were through this with you and I just 12 years ago. And they would rather you come to them right now and tell them, hey, there's no way I'm going to be able to pay you. Here's my situation. And grant you three months breathing room as opposed to you letting it be a surprise to them. 
So I want you to, number one, stop the bleeding by negotiating with all your creditors. And I want you to get your monthly outgo for your total household down to as small as you can possibly get it. Number two, I then want you to build the most powerful routine ASAP. Notice you could do these first two things in 24 hours. In one day, you can have these first two things set. If number one is stop the bleeding, number two is I want you to build a powerful routine immediately. And here's why. A powerful routine from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed while you are locked at home with your significant other and your kids on lockdown is the only thing that's going to keep you from being in fear. It's the only thing that's going to keep you positive. It's the only thing that's going to keep you productive and help you get set up for the time when the music starts again. And you're going to have to enroll the whole family on this routine. You're going to have to tell the kids what's in it for them if they help you uphold it. You're going to have to tell the significant other what's in it for them if they help you uphold it. you got to fill your cup first so that you can be the best version of yourself for everybody else later so you can get through this, so you can survive and then thrive. So I want you to build a powerful routine, one that puts you in position to be positive from the moment you wake up to the minute that you go to bed. And part of that means finding positive propaganda like podcasts, just like this one, YouTube channels, free webinars, you name it. Anything that's going to lift you up and motivate you and give you information, give you education, that is positive propaganda. I want you to find that over the negative propaganda. Negative propaganda is the news right now, especially. It's other people's social media where they're sharing the scary stuff, even if they mean well. You want to stay informed? Great. Look at the news 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening, and set a timer. It'll stop you from going down the rabbit hole. So after you build a powerful routine, number two, number three is I want you to find 12 weeks or three months of runway. What this means is if step one was stopping the bleeding and getting your monthly outgo as low as you can, Then step three is taking that number, your total monthly household expenses, times the number three, three months, and that is how much runway you need to find immediately. And this is not a time for excuses. This is not a time for you to say, Chris, if I had that money available for runway, then we wouldn't even be listening to this right now. That's why I say I expect you to find it the same way I did in my story. That's why I shared my story about people carrying my furniture out about 10 minutes ago. So pretend that your family's total monthly expenses were $4,000 a month after negotiating them down. Three months runway, 4,000 times three would be $12,000. You get resourceful and you find that $12,000. Got good credit? Open up a line of credit. Take the money out. Got a retirement account? Tap into it. They are about to announce that they are going to waive the penalties on that. By the time you hear this, they probably have already announced it. There are people you can borrow from. There are people that will invest in you. You have loved ones. You have friends. You have neighbors. You have tribe. And you have stuff you can sell. You even have skill sets that can help you create income in a hurry. And that's number four. After you find three months of runway, and I mean you find it no matter what and as fast as possible. The number four is you create new income. Every single one of you have a marketable skill or a product you can create right now on the spot. I mean, opportunities everywhere. And this is the part where I get excited. This is the part where I said, I can't stop seeing opportunity because I'm an opportunity-seeking machine. As of just a couple weeks ago, when the whole world got turned upside down on its head, when the music stopped and nobody had a chair to sit in, all of a sudden, brand new needs were created and people are foaming at the mouth to satisfy these needs. So where do you fit in? All of a sudden, people need coaching. I mean, mom and dad are at home for the first time ever, trying to work from home together for months on end. There's going to be relationship coaching that needs to be done. The kids are at home and you are expected to tutor them. There are going to be plenty of tutors being hired by mom and dad. Family counseling. You need to stay in shape and you need to stay healthy while you're at home. So can you create workouts? 
Can you teach yoga? Can you teach nutrition? We are facing one of the biggest threats to our immune system in history. What can you do to help people boost their immune system? I know many of you are nutritionists. Many of you study this. What about business advice? All of the people, all the managers, all the company owners who are forced to come home and let their employees work from home, they need business advice. All the people just starting businesses right now out of necessity, they need business advice. Money advice, health advice, family advice. You've never had a more captive, hungry audience. Leverage it for your safety and your survival. Heck, even MLM, network marketing, something that is one of our income sources for the past 10 years, explodes during times like this. Something that most of you would never consider doing is now a tremendous option because the barrier of entry is next to nothing. But the business is instant cash flow in times like this. Number four is create new income because opportunity is everywhere and people need what you can offer. And the barrier of entry to start a business in a time like this is nothing more than a way to accept payment. So PayPal, Stripe, Venmo, and a way to deliver your product. For most of you, that's Zoom, FaceTime, Skype. After you do number four, and after you've created this new income, now I want you to set your sights on number five. And that is figuring out what your 12 months runway is and making it happen. Now listen, number one and number two could be done in 24 hours. Stop the bleeding and then build a powerful routine. Number three can truly be done in about 72 hours. Find three months runway. Number four, create new income. For some of you, it's going to happen in a day. I've already seen it. For many of you, it'll take a week. It'll take two weeks. Number five, figuring out 12 months runway and finding a way to make that happen. That might take you a couple of months. Some of you will be resourceful. You'll find 12 months runway by rolling up your sleeves and getting creative in no time at all. But for some of you, it's okay. If figuring out 12 months runway and then finding it and making it happen takes a couple of months because you've already figured out your three months runway. So you're fine. You're safe. You're set. And after you've done that, number six. Number six is I want you to build your September plan, your September product, your September launch. I want you to be primed and ready and ready to go, ready to launch come September when all the demand is back, when the kids are back in school, when the economy is cranked up again, when all the money is in the system, when the markets have already rebounded because the markets always rebound before Main Street does, when the restaurants are open, the stores are open, people are back in offices, and when the pent-up demand is forcing people to hold their money up, whatever money they have left saying, take this, I'm dying to buy something. Take this, I'm dying for entertainment. Take this, I'm tired of being cooped up. Take this, I want to feel productive. We are going to be able to print money in September. You are going to be able to print money in September. But only if you put yourself in a position to do so by doing number one, two, three, four, and five first. So now that you know what's coming, you know how to get prepared. And not one of these things that I shared is impossible for any one of you. I know because I've been there before. And so I hope that me sharing my story, I hope that me sharing my experience, I hope that me sharing my expertise that I have now has helped to relieve some fear, has helped to light a fire in you, has helped to give you a path. It doesn't have to end in disaster. You get to call the shots during this crazy, impossible time. You do not get to choose the circumstances right now, but you do get to choose the outcome. And more new businesses, more new entrepreneurs, And more new millionaires will be created coming out of this more than any other time in our history. That's the side that I wish for you. But you have to choose it. And when you do, you know what happens. 
When good people just like you make good money, you can do great things. And hey, listen, speaking of doing great things, a lot of you have been reaching out, asking for help on creating your business, asking for help on pivoting, because that's what we're all doing right now, asking for help on coming up with how you're going to monetize and launch these new income sources. And I've never, ever, ever made public before that you can have strategy sessions with me. Um, But I've decided, even though they were only for my elite level mastermind members in the past, that I have opened up 90-minute business strategy sessions with any of you who want my advice on how to thrive and how to pivot. If you're interested in this, all you have to do is go to fortheloveofmoney.com, fortheloveofmoney.com forward slash strategy. Again, that is fortheloveofmoney.com forward slash strategy. And because of the times we're in right now, I have taken 60% off of my hourly rate in order to help all of you build your businesses coming out of this. If you want to check it out, if you want to book your strategy session, go to fortheloveofmoney.com forward slash strategy. It's my way of helping you survive and then thrive. I can't wait to work with you. Good luck. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.